Hey, redheads and everyone else listening. I'm Stephanie. I'm Adrian. Today's episode is so cool because we're talking about fashion. We're talking styling, about colors that look great on mm-hmm. redheads. This is one of our top Topic. topics. Uh, if you Google how to be a redhead, or most of our SEO goes to a certain that post one about, article what about colors, colors you should wear. be wearing. <laughs> yeah, redheads really love to talk about it at our Rocket Like a Redhead events. We had a whole station where in every city. We would have someone who, you know, would dress you and tell you what you looked good in and what colors you looked good in. And we always post about things on howtobearedhead.com about like the top colors for the season. And like when the color of the year comes out for Pantone, we're always like talking about how like it's redhead friendly or not redhead friendly. recently, which is such a redhead friendly color. I mean, mostly I think every year it's been something that I'm like awesome color because they're always like really bold usually. There have been some years where it's been like. Or maybe it was purple Marcella. Remember that one a few years ago? Oh, that was a great one. But, you know, redhead friendly colors, greens, purples, blues, um, you know, oranges, even like burnt orange. But we really want to dive in and talk about two colors that a lot of redheads are afraid to wear. And we have a great guest. Her name is Irene O'Brien. She is a natural redhead. She's a fa- she's a fashion stylist living in Ireland. And she presents a live style slot weekly for a popular TV show there called RTE Today with Maura and Diley, and with a specific focus on confidence and dressing and sustainable fashion. Um, and so basically, we'll, we'll talk about her story because I think it's part yeah. of everyone's personality. But basically, she has a really big niche and love for vintage clothing and so she started her own vintage style and antique fair in Ireland and it became a very very popular biannual event and it gained a big media interest so from there she started to carve out her career as a stylist and she started you know marrying media with like fashion events and she now runs her own styling business working as a creative consultant over editorial and commercial products uh and projects but in 2008 uh she launched the gilded thread and it's a podcast and i think when you speak with her uh she's awesome she has such a fun upbeat personality so she has a really great podcast that she's been working on for the past year but i think why we wanted to have her on is she's really really passionate about confidence and that's what being redhead's all about. So we're excited to talk with her about how she gained confidence through her style being a redhead. And now she mentors and advises on how to harness power through clothing and how we present ourselves. And she has worked with a number of corporate brands as part of their well-being programs because you have to feel good and clothes that's are a big so part important. of that. Yeah. So moments of particular satisfaction and enjoyment for Irene are working with her private clients. Um, she's very personable. And so can't wait to have her on. Yeah. And we're, we are going to talk to, when we talk to her, we're going to talk about some of the posts that we've seen that she's um, featured on her Instagram. So if you want to follow her, her handles, Irene O'Brien style all together. And her profile picture will pop up of this really cute photo of her um, in this kind of twerk turquoise shirt with the pink background. So I was really drawn to that when I saw her profile yeah. picture. Cause I was like, those are two colors that a lot of redheads probably wouldn't wear, but her style's exquisite and it's so unique. And I think that she brings in a lot of vintage to, um, tie into also maybe like what's in trend with leopards and denims and all of that sort of stuff. And, um, yeah, so we're really excited to talk to her and break these myths and these concept these ideas that redheads can't wear certain colors and really how to rock it. So let's call her up all the way in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> the H2 bar box, a monthly beauty subscription box for redheads. Each box is worth $80 plus and each product is redhead friendly approved. Head to h2barbox.com to subscribe and use code podcast to receive 20% off. Hi, Irene. This is Stephanie and Adrian Vendetti. Hi, how are you? Nice to speak with you. Hi. Hi. We were just going through your Instagram. Your oh, really? St- yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it looks so like you have so much fun. <laughs> I was and just your, looking at all your travels. And your style is exquisite. 
Oh God, thanks so much. It's so funny, isn't it? Because we put everything out on Instagram and then when someone says they're looking at it, you're like, oh my God, it's like someone's just crept into my room and gone through the doors. Or I know, it's so personal, isn't it? <laughs> the weirdest thing. <laughs> it is. Oh my gosh, you, you, you rock such beautiful colors with your red hair. That's the first thing I noticed. Oh, thanks a million. Yeah. I love color. I love color. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I suppose. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of a funny one, isn't it? Because I think a lot of people, um, w- well, you'd know. I mean, you you guys are the redhead experts, but uh, I'm sure you come across a lot of people that um, avoid color for with their hair because um, they just feel that there's too much going on and too much clashing. And I, I think I get that sometimes. You know, I try something on and I think, okay, the hair is kind of orange, the skin's kind of blue today, the eyes are a certain tone, there's this, and there can be a lot going on as well. But I I embrace colour. And sometimes if I wear, if I find myself introducing lots of black into my wardrobe or wearing lots of dark colours in a row, I, I'm like, oh, something's happening. I need to review my soul. <laughs> Why is this happening? So, um, so yeah, I just, I embrace colour anyway, because I just think it's fun, you know. Um, but I think people are told as well from kind of a, um, a young age, uh, I don't know if you guys were the same, you know, stay away from that colour, don't wear this, yes. you know, a lot of rules. Totally. So totally. many totally. rules and so many people telling you, oh, you can't wear white, you can't wear red, you can't wear yellow. All of these, you know, all yeah. of these colors that we love, you know, but growing up, it's kind of because your red hair is bright red. Yeah. So you grew yeah. up, you had natural red hair. Growing natural up. red hair. Yeah. And actually, my hair's gotten a little bit darker over the years. It was probably even kind of brighter when I was younger. Um, and and maybe that's what and, and maybe it's just that thing that red hair kind of attracts attention as well. So people feel like they need to tell you something about yourself. But like you would never mm. say that to to anyone with any other color hair, would you? I, well, I certainly, I never see it happen. People just going up and giving unsolicited no. uh, advice. advice. <laughs> yeah. Kind of uh, dated unsolicited advice, you know? It's really funny. It is, it's like being part of um, a certain crew that you'll only know if you're red hair. Right. I know. How was it growing up in Ireland with red hair? Well, I think, you know, it's a funny one because I think people think that everyone in Ireland has red hair. They <laughs> probably do. <laughs> everyone has red hair, yeah. Um, and it's it's really not the case. You know, like in, in, in most classes, there might be one or two redheads. Um, so I suppose the fact that you're in a minority already, um, like my, my husband says to me, uh, he's like, oh, people slagged me for my ears when I was younger. He said, you know, you'll always be slagged for something because that's what kids do. They try to choose what's different about you. But it felt so personal as a redhead because you would feel like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm being so singled out. But the funny thing is that I became best friends with a fellow redhead. Oh. We really didn't like each other in the first couple of years. And then we were made to sit beside each other. And then she is now, you know, my oldest friend in the world. And um, it was a funny one because I felt like I like was mad about her and we could relate on so many levels. But I kind of thought it looked like we could only find each other. And in a way, it made us more of a target because oh. if we were kind of walking along. People were like, oh, your head's on fire. They used to go ding ling ling your head's on fire. And there was all these different things. I mean, oh my God. I would have done anything, <laughs> anything for my hair to not be red. And her, all of her siblings um, had red hair as well. And I spent loads of time with, time with them. And um, and then, you know, our friends with her sisters and then her cousin and everything. So actually it was, it was it, like, if you saw us together, that's exactly what people think Ireland is. Loads of red hats are united together and it's just really awesome. <laughs> I'm sure so many people think that. in our group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they oh, yeah, picture, totally. you know, you but, know, the um, Weasley family in Harry Potter. I think that they, they yes, picture yeah, it like yeah, that. Yeah. Like the whole family's <laughs> red hat. I think that's how they picture it. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that that's why, like, I remember kind of fancying a boy um, when I was, like, in my early teens. But he was kind of strawberry blonde hair. Um, but I was thinking, oh, no, like, I can't, I, you know, like a redhead with a redhead again. Or, like, it looks like, you know, you just, it was just opening ourselves up to something. And I didn't want any more attention. And, you know, like, all anyone wants to do when they're younger is is just kind of, you know, fit in. Blend in, um, yeah. So I definitely did not. I, like I would have done anything not to have red hair and everything that went with it like the freckles and the pale skin and and I went to school um in just like a regular national school it wasn't fee paying or anything but the surrounding areas of it were quite affluent 
and I always think wherever you have an affluent area, you, we, I don't know what it is, but it's just these insanely good looking people. So everyone around me was like these tanned limbs and they went on two holidays a year and, you know, we're li- like bronzed and, you know, we just had freckles from the west of Ireland, like running around the fields or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't have felt more different from them. Um, so, but it's funny because as time went on, when I was thinking, I'd be thinking, oh, I wish both of us didn't have red hair because, you know, we were just, people would comment every time then we went somewhere together and we went to loads of places together because we were friends. But as time went on, it wasn't that I wished I didn't have red hair. I wished she didn't have red hair because I started oh, wow. realizing that my red hair was so much part of my identity. It is. And actually, I wasn't willing to 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 give that up anymore, you know? Yeah. yeah. So how did you get started in the fashion industry? Um, You know, it was always media that I was interested in. Um, and I liked, I, I kind of thought I wanted to do acting or TV hosting or something like that. And, um, and uh that was kind of the the path that I had been taking. But I love clothes and I always loved older clothes. I was always fascinated with kind of the story they tell. Um, And I got really into vintage fashion and people were kind of, people would ask me maybe to do some personal styling for them. So I was dipping my toe in and out of that. And then I got into, um, I got to know some people kind of in the vintage world and they, um, I, I began working on some big kind of vintage fairs and events and at those I was emceeing and then they were covered by some media and so I was asked to do some kind of pieces to camera and, and then it just kind of evolved and then, you know, it was actually the, the TV side of styling some producers said to me, well, you know, would you do some contemporary stuff as well? And I was thinking, okay, complete fraud, but I'm all about, oh, do, yeah, say yes and figure it out afterwards. Um, so I was thinking, God, I don't even know if contemporary like brands will want to work with me or if they'll know who I am. And so there was a whole, um, of course, I mean, they wouldn't know who I was at all. And, and there was a whole um, kind of period of uh, fake it till you make it. In fact, I'm, I, I would say I'm still faking it. <laughs> faking it. I will be forever more. I think that's the world of the, uh, the self-employed as well, isn't it? But um, so it was from there then that all the styling work came in. So actually, it was it, it's funny because I chat to a lot of people that maybe are in the fashion world or styling. They go, oh, I'd love to do that those pieces with TV, how did, the, how did the TV stuff come about? And actually, that kind of nearly came first. And then I started doing more of the editorial and all of that as well. So it's um, it definitely wasn't a defined path. I never thought about really working in fashion, but I loved clothes. And I think that being a red has had a lot to do with that as well. That, you know, that thing about everyone just trying to fit in and everything. Like it got to a stage where I was thinking... Well, they all look better in those clothes <laughs> anyway, I thought. And yeah. and at this stage as well, my hair, like, although the color I had come to accept, my hair was, like, so wild. Like, little orphan Annie has nothing on me, you know? Like, it was just wild. <laughs> it would only grow upwards and outwards. So um, I started thinking, like, no, I want I want my clothes to express who I am because I felt a bit frustrated that I wasn't able to. And, and I think maybe that thing as well about hanging around with all these other kind of redheads and being kind of, um, kind of just all assumptions made that we were all the same. I think that there was definitely part of me that really wanted to reach out and think, no, I want to be more me and my identity. And I think, you know, I because I, people say it was really young for you to get into vintage clothes because it wasn't even called vintage really then, you know. And um, and I was like, I was just kind of fascinated. And also I liked the idea that they were one-offs and um, they were different. So I actually do think now, you know, thinking about it, that that has a lot to do with me kind of trying to discover my own style um, as well. And then, and then I, I, you know, I just love the idea of the sixties and stuff. And I, 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 I like the kind of um, rock and roll feel to that era as well. Um, so I, I definitely think that there is correlation between the two, even though I never really thought about it before. Um, but I do think that I think it was about to try, trying to find my own way and thinking, you think you can make these assumptions about me or, you know, these things about me. Um, or, or you're past remarkable. People are so past remarkable to redheads, you know. Um, right. But, but I want to pave my own way and I want to say who I am. And I think I started doing that through my clothes. So Love that. it was other people that were like, well, you should do something in fashion, you know. So it kind of came the other way around. Um, but it's good. It's kind of full circle because now I still get to contribute to TV or maybe, you know, do the same with radio and write some stuff as well. So actually I've gotten to marry the two, which is really enjoyable and I feel quite lucky that's so great so what are your favorite colors to see on a redhead or maybe maybe even on you like what colors do you love well I love 
I love white. I really love white. I think it's. I think white is so cool. And also, it's one of those um, colors. I think that like I see it on uh, people. Like I probably don't even own too much of it. I might own white tops or something that I like under dungarees or things like that. But when I see someone rocking head to toe white or cream, I think, oh my god, you have everything together because you're so able to actually have the confidence to know that that's not going to be covered in all sorts of like slobber yeah. or makeup or food by the end slobber, of the day. Yeah. So there's something really cool. But I love, I love that kind of palette um, um, on redheads as well, because I feel like there's a beautiful contrast there. That's not to say I love like nudes all the time and everything, because I think that a lot of the kind of beiges and nudes, um, it's a lot more to do with skin tone than it actually is hair color. Definitely. As to whether that goes with you or not. Yeah. And I think that can just wash you out. But that's why I always like, particularly if I'm doing personal styling, I always say like, please just try it on. I just do. And I say to people, humor me, just humor me, you know? And, and then that afterwards they're like, oh, humor me was your way of tricking me into getting it on. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, because you can't know how you feel in something until you put it on. Um, but I love really um, kind of pale pinks on redheads. I love the kind of that clash of color. Yeah, I love reds so on redheads. And of course, yeah, it's just, it's cool, isn't it? You know, like you, you and that's the thing, you know, th- these kind of pink trouser suits have been in for, the last couple of seasons or you know there's kind of powdery pastel-y colours and um, like you know you see pinks and you're like oh that's cool but you've seen a few now but actually I think I'd do a double take if I saw a redhead in it and I think um, that's nice for other redheads as well like I remember kind of that feeling when I was younger about finding redheads that I thought were cool, you know, and, and that weren't um, portrayed in any sort of cliche way. So even like the likes of, I don't know if you remember, like Tiffany, that singer, do you remember Tiffany or Belinda Carlisle or any of these? They all had cool. And and, and even um, that show that came out in the 90s, My So-Called Life, I was just like, oh my God, she has red hair and she's cool and she's into Nirvana. And, you know, it was <laughs> you mm-hmm. could really kind of relate. So I think it's nice when redheads kind of... Um, uh, don't don't wear necessarily what's expected of them, you know. But in saying that, I, I I think there's I think there's something so beautiful about blue. There's so many different tones of blue, and I'm yet to see one that doesn't really look kind of magic on redheads. I we um, agree. So Cobalt think, blue is our you know, favorite. That's, that's the color. Yeah, it's like it is. It's beautiful, isn't it? So I um, but yeah, I suppose I I love wearing. I I I there's very little that I wouldn't allow myself where it's just a matter of whether it washes me out or not and I suppose that's also how you do yourself up and all of those things as well yeah so um, on your Instagram we saw a uh, photo I don't know when it was but it was recent about yellow and you were wearing a yellow dress and I know we've written so many articles about wearing the color yellow and I know Jessica Chastain really recently was in a movie premiere and she wore yellow and we kind of asked a question to our audience, polled them and wanted to know if they wear yellow. And a majority of the people of the redheads were saying, no, it's too bright. It cla- it makes me look like Ronald McDonald. Like it's not something I want to wear, but we saw you in that photo and we loved it. So what's your advice? You know, again, there's so many different colors similar to blue of yellow, the yellow family. So, um, should you stick to well, more? Exactly. It's, it- it's more about tone, I think, isn't it? Um, so I do feel like the thing about yellow, I don't know if you used to have this thing. We used to have these um, flowers that grew wild and we used to all put them under each other's chin when we were younger, like in school. And the reflection of the yellow would go under your skin. And we would say, if it was bright yellow, you liked butter. And if it wasn't, it, <laughs> and if it wasn't you didn't <laughs> like butter. Don't ask me. I don't. I do not think it was a scientific test. Um, but it's interesting to recall that because I remember how holding that, yellow flower under someone's chin affected everyone differently um, and that was kind of the, the joy of the game you know would it be bright or would it be kind of dull the reflection of it and I suppose that that's a good way to do it is to really hold something up and I do think you know it is that thing that I was saying earlier about sometimes you feel like there's so many different colors going on so if you put a if you put a color up to yourself um and you feel like, oh, I, I'm, I'm, there's way too much going on and there's no focus or something. It might just be that the tone is wrong. And I get that thing about feeling like Ronald McDonald or a bit of a sunflower or something like that. But I think it's about finding the right tone. So when people say, no, I don't wear yellow, you're, you're closing yourself off to 
so many different options and so much fun with fashion and style. So I think maybe say I haven't found the right yellow for me or it can be that it's the shape as well. And I think that you shouldn't underestimate that. If you feel like a colour is um, quite brave for your skin tone or for your um, hair, but you still think it works, try it in a more tailored look because sometimes that's what it is. It's like if there's going to be layers and layers of fabric or if it's going to be really kind of, you know, a, a wide, almost baby doll dress or something like that. Sometimes that it, sometimes it's the um, kind of, um, it's the adding up of all those elements that isn't working for you. So maybe it's that you, maybe it would be that it would be a really cool yellow shirt in high-waisted Levi's or something that would look really Ooh, cool on you, you know? that sounds really so I nice. Think, I yeah. think yeah. definitely, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think definitely consider the shape and the tailoring because sometimes the the bigger the fit or, or you know, like I love really sometimes really shapeless clothes. I think they're really cool, but sometimes they do better in darker or more muted tones um, because it's not just like kind of an attack on your, your eyes when you're looking in the mirror. Um, and also the other thing is wear it away from your face and your hair. So wear a cool pair of like... Um, like cute shorts or uh, like three quarter length trousers or something like that, you know, get your tailoring there and then wear a more muted color on top. So I wouldn't rule it out altogether. And when in doubt, I mean, get a pair of yellow shoes for goodness sake. Have happy feet. (laughs) Yeah. I don't own any yellow shoes. I should. I I just think they're so fun because they're cool under like even flares or even, you know, if you just wear a little black dress or something like that, I'm all about, you know, trying to find cool colours and, and ones that you don't necessarily have in your wardrobe that you don't necessarily wear near to your face because it's ways of um, just finding fun with them. And the funny thing is, when you introduce certain colours into your accessories, suddenly you really kind of become fond of them and you'll find yourself drawn to them more in clothing and then you might take the chance. But I have a you know an expression, I'm always like, just just bloody wear it, just wear it, you know? And I, and I suppose prior because some, so many people buy things and have things in their wardrobe and they feel they don't feel brave enough and that always makes me feel sad because I'm saying you love that at some stage so I would say as well just bloody try it and you know bring it into the changing room and just see how you feel in it and take some photos and, and go back afterwards but you know think it's sometimes I think imagine that you're someone else what would you think of that outfit on yourself yeah and and- I think we have to give ourselves permission as redheads as well sometimes yeah. So what happens? Like I saw some of the pictures, like when you when when you wear white or you wear yellow, do you do different things with your makeup? Because sometimes I feel like white may wash me out. But then that day I may I might wear like a really dark eyeliner and black mascara. You yeah, know, exactly. I play up with like, it. I love I love like lashings and lashings of mascara and eyeliner. And I like just going for it as well. Um, and I, I agree with you. I think sometimes if something is um if it's, if it's a color that you're afraid of kind of washing you out a little bit, um, we'll definitely play with stuff. The thing is as well, like, I don't know, like there was a few years here in Ireland where, uh, uh, I mean, people bathed in fake tan and it was ludicrous. Mm. Everyone was the same color as of orange, you know? Um, <laughs> um, but, but, but the the thing is, so I was like trying to go, I, I definitely got involved for a while and then I tried to rally against it because I was like as well, why, were, why am I trying to make myself look the same? But, one of the truths of being a redhead often is that you can be very pale and unfortunately not everyone gets to be that lovely alabaster pale that we see on so many beautiful redheads. Um, sometimes it's more like blue, which my skin goes, and freckly and different Same stuff. Here. yeah. So I would often use like... Um, um, in that case, if I was wearing a, a, a colour that I felt kind of needed a bit of help and was showing a lot of my um, body or limbs, what I might do is, let's say, use MAC face and body because it's a foundation and it's a great foundation, but then I can put it a little bit over my skin. So it's not actually changing the colour of my skin because I will always match my foundation exactly to my skin. Um, but what it's doing is it's giving me a nice base and it's it means that you're not seeing maybe the purple veins and the blue veins and the freckles and the everything. And I'm never trying to uh, cover my freckles ever. Um, but, mm. you know, a nice body makeup won't do that. What it will do is just kind of help you be all the one tone, and which I think is something that we can struggle with as redheads because already there's a lot of brightness going on with our hair, generally with our eyes, because so many of us have light eyes as well, and then with the freckles and everything else. So sometimes it is important to kind of prep in that way. Um, but again, I do think that like a really, like really strong eyes or really bold lip 
can really help with that as well if you're kind of trying to balance it out. Um, and I do think it is the time to define your features is when you're wearing those colors as well. Oh, Definitely. So, so don't look yeah, define your features. So what you, do you have a favorite red lipstick? Oh, yes. My favorite ma- red lipstick is Mac Ruby Woo. Oh, that's like the that's best. best one. They're probably the only two things I own. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Ruby so Woo and it's, my face and body. It's so funny um, because when we saw your Insta, your I think you posted a photo like a couple of days ago, or um, but you were wearing a red lipstick, and I I thought to myself, I was like, it looks like Ruby Woo, but of course, like you know, with oh, the, I didn't. Good. Yeah, but oh my god, that's like one of our favorite shades. It looks good with everything. It really does. It looks good with everything. Plus, I mean, I'm sure you guys have spoken about it a million times over. You know, it has a blue base. And that's what we need as redheads. You need the blue base. That's really important. And it does make a difference, you know. And also the staying power of it. And you forget to wear it for ages. But the thing is, you think it's more work than it is. Because actually, it stays much longer than anything else. Um, And the key as well is to, to, you know, use the liner use the liner and I think that's more important as well as you age because our, our lips get more kind of cracked and uneven stuff too so yeah the, the the matching liner is it's the dream and also I know people say oh get rid of your um, lipstick after three months or something like that like I dread to tell you I've had that for years no I think us um, too I so, think yeah, I totally we favorite. totally get that Uh, So when it comes to wardrobe essentials, so say it's someone who's super simple, maybe they're just like, you know, a t-shirt and, you know, jeans kind of person. If they're looking to have a really well-versed wardrobe, what are the essentials that they need? Um, I think... The key to, I suppose, you know, we talk about this, let's say every January and every September as well. There's a lot about capsule dressing. um, And I don't think that it needs to be necessarily that it's just neutrals. But what it does need to be is that every piece will work hard for you. So when you're going to buy something, um, if, if most of your things are quite simple and then you think, oh, this is a bit loud, where will it fit in? Ask yourself, you know, what four different ways could I style this or have it in my wardrobe? So I definitely think like, a great pair of jeans. And I know so many of my friends or clients or colleagues or associates or family that have bought probably 20 to 25 pairs over, let's say, the last five years of average jeans because they seemed like good value, but they were never great. And I would say just do yourself a favor and buy one really, really, really good pair. Just save. Every time you're tempted to buy that pair of jeans, don't do it. Put that money away and then really invest. Yeah, Yeah, it's like... The thing is, there is no substitute for quality. And the thing about a great pair of jeans is we know this. You guys know this. When you put it on, you feel so good. There's no getting away from it. And that's why we reach for a certain pair of jeans all the time. And unfortunately, the less expensive ones, like the fact is it's called fast fashion. They are not meant to last. No one has made them to last. You know, so Mm. I mean, it's problematic in loads of different ways, but none more so that you're sp- choosing to spend your money on something that isn't making you feel great and you know you won't get longevity out of. Like when I, it's really Irish expression, but people go, oh, it'll do, it'll do, like it's it's fine, it'll do for now. And I hate that expression because I think, no, it won't do. Like invest the time in yourself to find the right pair that are great and then save for that pair or, you know, work towards that. Because I, I do think like jeans are just a game changer. Like I'm almost nine months pregnant now and I keep on looking at people in jeans and I'm like, a waste. I can't wait to have uh, uh, again. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like I I don't even feel like I wear jeans that much, but it's so funny now that I I'm out of the jean game that how much I want them and how much actually there's so many great ways that you can wear them, you know. And so I do think that I think definitely really nice um organic cotton will last better, like white t shirts. Um, shirts I love that kind of man's look in a shirt as well because the thing about that is you could still wear that with like a little cord pinafore or something too you know so it's just trying to think of all the different ways of wearing it but I specifically think a lot for redheads as well if you are someone that likes dressing quite in quite a paired back way as well like some of the things that are fun um uh, to to introduce are um hair accessories because I think like it, our hair is our crowning glory and we all come to that kind of conclusion eventually you know um, and yeah. so and now there's so much choice right and there's so many of those clips i see you know on online um which look really cool yeah, yeah. 
And then, I'm so, like, how, who made them so quickly when one person said clips are in? Oh my gosh. I know. I know. Wait, <laughs> going, going back, do you think that your um, soon to be baby will have red hair? Is there a possibility on your husband's side? This is the, this is the chat all the time. But um, so when I was growing up, I always thought red ha- hair was the strongest gene. So because, you know, that thing we were saying earlier, like if you see, you tend to see a family of redheads. Yeah. So um, I always thought, oh, that's the strongest gene. So, but now I'm saying that my dad has black hair and my mom has blonde hair. But I thought, oh, it's the strongest gene because, you know, I had an uncle, let's say, with black hair or with red hair. Um, actually, my mom says to me, you used to say that all the time, Irene, when you were younger. People would say, where's the red hair come from? And I used to say, my uncle. And mom said she'd nearly die. Like, oh, my God, you know what that's implying. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I I never realized I just I, I couldn't tell them it was just you know family trait but um but um apparently what I've learned in in recent years is that actually it needs to come from both yes so even though it might be from you know it might be from kind of both from three generations ago and um, so you know I was saying to my husband there's probably right here somewhere in your family um but his sister um is actually married to and has two kids uh, with a guy that is bald now but was definitely red and um, years ago and their kids don't have red hair so I don't think I'm going to get one oh I don't think my I am. gosh so I think about it a lot because um, <laughs> I, I thought a lot lately about you know the nearer you get to the end you, it's kind of like how will we bring the child up and what can I instill in them and I keep on thinking gosh if my child's a redhead how can I what can I do to make them love their hair sooner than I ever did? And yeah, I, I that's don't so the important. I'm still trying to come up with a narrative, but um, it would be something that would be really important to me. Because the thing is, all these old, wise ladies that probably weren't old at all, they were probably like in their 40s or something when I was younger and I thought they were ancient, <laughs> used to always say, you know, oh, you're so lucky and all of that. And, and I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, you know. Um, but... But now I do feel lucky. I do feel lucky to have red hair. I think it, I think it really shapes who you are as a person. Personally, I think so. Do you Do you guys? Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, yeah. it's everything. It's every. It, I, we wouldn't be. We always say we wouldn't be the same people we are. You know, Adrian and I are so. Our personalities are so different. But when it comes down to being redheads, it defines who our who we are as women and our personality and going into our style and um, what we do on a day-to-day basis to make it look more vibrant, you know, whether it's wearing Mac Ruby brew or wearing clips in our hair, you know, there's so many different ways. And I think growing up, I dyed this Stephanie, I dyed my hair platinum blonde for seven plus years of my life because I disliked my red hair. So going into what you just said about when your, you know, your baby comes into this world and if they do have red hair, how to instill that confidence. And I think about that sometimes because my husband and I don't have children yet, but if my husband, um, he's very, you know, dark hair. He has a little bit of Native American Mm -hmm. in him, but I found out that his grandmother was a redhead. So it is a possibility. And I think about sometimes, oh my God, if they're a redhead, how, what you just said, how will I make sure that they love their red hair and they didn't go through what I went through? Not saying I don't wish that I didn't go through it because it's who I am now, but just making it easier and knowing that it's awesome to stand out and you want to stand out as you get older. And I think that's so important. You do. The only thing is, I do think as well that we probably are in a time now that um, people, I hope, uh, there's loads wrong with social media, but I do think that we're probably in a time that people embrace their differences a lot younger than they used to. and, um, And that also people are more open to, diversity of all kinds now so I would hope that in general um, that's that would be something that any of the next generation that we're bringing into the world will will have but there is that thing that kids are just mean to each other you know they're just mean to each other so it's, yeah. it's arming them and knowing that, that, that that's more to do with the other person than it is to do with with them um, but I mean, but listen, I mean, sure what you guys are doing, you've, you've, I, I don't know how many years you guys have been doing this now, but really long time celebrating redheads all around the world every day. And that's amazing. Like, you know, we didn't have platforms like that. So it's so cool to think that all these other redheads of every age can have something like, you know, your platform to, to kind of celebrate that. So that's yeah, cool. I know it's so passionate of us because it's just, it's exactly what you just said. That's exactly why we started it. Cause we were like, well, we wish we had this. Like, I wish I could have 
been like in seventh grade getting bullied or whatever was going on. I didn't know like what colors to wear or like how to do my hair or what foundation. I wish I could just go on a website and it was catered to me. That would have been so cool. So it's yeah. really awesome yeah. now when like moms write in or like teenagers write in and they're like, this is so life changing. So for us, we feel like so fulfilled from it because we're like, wow, That's you know, so cool. it's I'm sure it's just that like styling, so cool. you know, you give people life, especially if you make a client feel good yeah. about him or herself, you know, it probably lights up your That's day. Business. You that know, it's just, yeah. yeah, there is nothing better than that. Yeah, no, 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah. So uh, and that's the thing. There is there is style and um, there are looks and there is something for everyone. Um, it's just finding what what your taste is as well. And I think, you know, the sooner people can learn that. And I, I sometimes have women in their 60s who say they just copy the way their neighbor dresses because they've never found that themselves or they've certainly never given themselves permission to explore their own taste. Mm. Um, so, you know, the sooner you can do that and the earlier you can do that, then you're just going to kind of find your tribe sooner too, you know, and then also be accepted and celebrated for who you are. And um, because the thing is, you know, it could sound like this is all really superficial because it's just how you look, but that's, that's the thing we all understand. It's not, it's so much more, it's about your identity. And I do think that um, when people talk about, you know, clothes being, you know, uh, uh, you know, the fashion world, it's just a bit kind of wishy-washy and, um, what's the point of it? It's like, there's, there's, there's so much point to it, but also it's something that gives us armor and makes us feel good. And then yeah. it's really important that we can all put our best foot forward because then in everything you do, you're already bolstering yourself and giving yourself a little kind of leg up before you're even approaching the things that you need to do. Yeah. Love that. Well, it was so awesome to have you on and you know, best of luck too with the baby. That's so exciting. I know we're going to have to, we have to, um, I don't know if you're going to post on Instagram, but we'll definitely, we hope to see a photo. Oh, I'm sure I will. I'll let you know if it's a red hat. I know you're going <laughs> to have to send know. us a picture. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. We don't even know if it's a boy or girl at this stage. So yeah, oh, it'll be a nice surprise. Yeah, it will. Five or so weeks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Irene. And rock it like a redhead. Thank you. It was a pleasure <laughs> speaking with both of you. The H2 Bar Box, a monthly beauty subscription box for redheads. Each box is worth $80 plus, And each product is redhead friendly approved. Head to h2barbox.com to subscribe and use code podcast to receive 20% off. How sweet is she? Oh my gosh. She's so she's great. She's so bubbly. I know. She's <laughs> awesome. And if you're listening and you're from Ireland, especially the Dublin area where she resides, definitely reach out to her because her styling tips for redheads, I personally learned so much. And I even wrote down right in front of me, pale pink. I need to incorporate more pale pink into my wardrobe. I love pale pink. Coming from, you're wearing gray right now and I'm yeah. wearing white. <laughs> I know, we I, wear really basic colors I a lot love of the neutral colors. So I need to step it, I need to step it up. I know, when we did our book photo shoot, one of my favorite photos, were actually, we, we exchanged using the shirt for a few of the... Which the, one? It was the one that's off shoulder and it was pale pink. And we yes. did off shoulder pictures, beauty shots for the book promotion. It wasn't in the yeah. book, it was for the book promotion. We got that at H&M. I think so. And I think about that color and I'm like, I always like really, really loved the way it made I my know. skin look. I have to, I have to also, I mean, I know it's summertime, but going into the fall, I want to incorporate more cobalt blues and eggplant purples and just a lot more colors. I really love leopard. I also need to incorporate leopard, but I'm making a mental note because there's a lot of things. I also need to stock up on Ruby Roo MAC lipstick. Oh my gosh. But I, I, I think the importance of talking to Irene is again, going back to what the core mission of how to be a redhead is, which is confidence, confidence. and loving who you are, loving your red hair and also loving what you wear. I know I'm sure that you've experienced this where you've worn something and then you just don't feel good in it that day. Like, I don't know. Have you, and yeah, whether I, it's, yeah. whether it's just going on to your day to day and I'm wearing this tank top that I'm like, Oh, I hate this tank top. It does not bring me joy. joy. Marie Kondo. Kondo. And I really just recently I redid it. I went through my closet again. I think it's been the third time this year and I'm just, I'm getting rid of things that don't spark joy. But I yeah, think I really, so important. I really need to incorporate more color. Yeah, I love a lot of color day to day. It makes me feel really happy. I actually, this is really random, but I remember one of the interviews, we used to just do interviews on how to be a redhead.com, like before podcasts were really popular. And one of our 
guest that we had on for a few posts was the ex-beauty director of Glamour Magazine. And I'm blinking on her name right now, but I'll put it, we'll put it in the podcast notes. Um, I think her name was Felicia. Yeah, um, it was. I'm totally blinking. But she was so awesome because she was the beauty editor for like 45 years or something. And it was Felicia. M- I, I hope I'm saying her last name right. Milo. M- Milewitz, Milewitz, yeah, M I L E W I C Z, yeah. And her and I, I would, I did the interviews particularly for How to Be a Redhead dot com, and this was like back in like 2013, 2012. Even I think I even talked to her like once in 2014. But she, her advice was always like rock color, and if you can't, if you wear all black, like wear something colorful, like as an undergarment, and it'll just make you have that confidence. I know. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, it's all about the confidence and, you know, just really doing it in style. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you want to help us spread the word about how to be a redhead brand in this podcast, give us a five star review and tell your friends, redheads and everyone else to subscribe. You can listen to this podcast directly on how to be a redhead dot com on Apple, iTunes, Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to look at the podcast notes to find links with, pro- with products <laughs> mentioned for this one particular. We'll probably feature just a bunch of different colors and some of our favorite options and you guys can link it and shop and have fun and so much more. Rock it like a redhead. redhead.